In one of our previous examples of passing uh, data via HTTP request, we had put together an example where we allowed the user to select a foreground and a background color in a form, which would then submit to a separate page. And on that separate page, we would then change the foreground and background color on that page to reflect the user's choice. What I wanted to do in this example was to go back to that and put the example together in a slightly different way using some new capabilities that we have. What I have here is one of the versions of the form that I had put together back when we had worked on that example. In that example, we had tried text fields, we had tried select components, and we had tried radio buttons. And what I've done here is I've basically just copied and pasted the radio button version of that example that we had done. I went through and did a little work on it, cleaned up the labels a bit more the way that they should have been. Uh, but essentially what it boils down to is that here I have a form that will send its data in via post, via post request. I have a group of radio buttons then for the foreground color. Uh, I let the user select black, select white, select yellow, select blue. And by default, we have the uh, black checkbox checked or the black radio button selected as the default foreground color. There's the checked value right there at the end. I also then have a group of radio buttons uh, very similar to the first for the background color. This time we have the uh, white value selected as the default radio button, but the user also has options for black, green, and orange. When I actually take a look at this in my browser, this is the way it looks right now. Uh, Essentially, just like the example we'd done before, just with the labels cleaned up and a little bit nicer than they were. Uh, what I wanted to do with this one now, though, was that instead of having this form submit to a separate page, which would then show the user's choice of colors, what I want to do instead is I want to see if we can have this page submit to itself. What I've done here is I've actually saved this code into a file called colors underscore two. So I'm going to change this form so that it submits to colors underscore two dot PHP. So essentially a page that submits to itself. There's no rules in PHP that says that a form has to uh, submit to a different page. If we think about it sort of from a request response cycle, um, point of view. Essentially, the user would request the form. The form would be sent back from the server to the user. The user would see the form. They would make their selections. They would submit. And then when the data was submitted, it would result in a request going back to the server that would execute the same script that had generated the form on their first request. So in a way, what we're looking for here is a script that can kind of fill two roles. On one side, what it can do is when it isn't given any data, it should just simply be able to supply the form to the user. On the other side, when data actually is submitted, the script should change the background color of the page and then and the foreground color, the background and the foreground color of the page, and then return the form with those changed colors back to the user. So let's see how that works. The only real change I've made here is I've set the form so that it submits to itself to the same file name. If I jump back over to the browser, refresh the page, and I choose black and white, black is my foreground color, white is my background color, and submit, it looks like everything worked just fine. If I actually go and uh, change the colors, let's say yellow for foreground and green for the background, nothing really changed, but then that's kind of to be expected because we're not actually at that point attempting to use any of the values that the user is selecting. So let's go add that part in. Back over in my text editor, I'm going to slide up to the top of my HTML file, and up here let me go ahead and drop in some style tags. And let's say for the body of this document, let's set the color to be whatever echoed value we got from the post request for FG, for the foreground color. And let's set the background color to be the echoed version of whatever we get from the post request for the background. 
I'm also going to come up and I'm going to comment out my other style sheet that I use to make my examples look a little bit prettier, just to make sure the colors I have in that are not going to interfere with anything else that's going on. So I'm going to jump back over to my browser, right? I'm going to hit refresh, and the colors all change. Yellow and green were the last options I made. If I choose uh, blue as foreground and orange as background, blue and orange. If I do white foreground, black background, there we go. Everything actually seems to be okay. It's of course not going back and reselecting the same radio buttons. That's something that would be uh, uh, prohibitively difficult based on what we know right now, but that's certainly something we'd want to come back and do later for uh, an improved user experience. But functionally, at the moment, this seems to be working okay. Or is it? Let's try something else. I'm going to just go up to my address bar and hit enter. So I'm basically reloading the page brand new from scratch. If I then go and actually look at the source code downloaded from the server to my browser to render this page, this is what I see. My form is certainly down here and that's fine, but the disturbing part is up in the head section where we should be putting in a foreground and a background color. You can see there are actually PHP notices, PHP errors embedded there inside my CSS code, which is not good, which is not valid. The problem is that when I come to this page initially, there is no submitted value for foreground and background color. So when I try to access those values in the post array, that results in an undefined index error. If I do actually choose colors, let's say yellow and green, then there are submitted values and accessing those values from the post array works just fine. You can see in that case the errors have gone away. But whenever I initially come to the page before any selection from the form is ever made, which I can simulate by reloading the page fresh from scratch, that's when those errors actually occur. So essentially what I need is I need some way of in the situation where when the form has not been submitted, in the situation where a foreground and background color has not been supplied, I need some way in that situation to be able to provide a default value. I could do that by putting in a set of PHP tags. Here I'm going to put them up at the very, very top of my HTML file. And what I want to do here is try to detect if there is a supplied foreground and background color. And if there is not, I will supply some defaults. I could do that this way. I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it fg for foreground. And to get the value for the foreground, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the comparison operator. The test that I'm going to base this operator on is I'm going to use the isSet function that we talked about a while back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, is there a value called fg set in the post array? That's going to be my basic test. If there is a value called fg in the post array, then I'm going to use it like that. And if there's not a value in the post array for my foreground color, I'm going to use the default value of black. So looking at this statement, it's a bit of a, bit of a mess in a way with all the symbols and uh, parentheses thrown in, but kind of walking through it a bit at a time, starting off here with is set dollar underscore post fg. So that is going to return a Boolean value, true or false. Either there is something called fg in the post array or there isn't. If there is something in the post array called fg, that will return true, which means we'll use the true section of our comparison operator here, which is the value of fg in the post array. If there wasn't anything called fg in the post array, that will be false. We'll use the false section over here and the value of this expression will become black. So everything to the right of the equal sign on this line then will result in either being black or the value that was submitted in the post array. Whichever of those two values we go with, that then becomes the value for fg. If I then come down in my CSS and instead of using the post array itself, instead say use the value of the fg variable, the fg variable should either be what was submitted by the user, or if nothing was submitted by the user, black. Let's give that a try and see how that works. If I come back over to my page in my browser and, browser and I refresh it, 
you can see now instead of getting an error for the foreground color, I'm getting black there, even on my first initial visit. If I change the foreground color to something else, let's do blue, for example, then I get blue there. Everything still changes because that time there was a submitted value for the script to use, so it did not need to fall back to the default black. When I go to the page fresh, though, no value has been submitted, it does fall back and use my default of black. If we make that a same basic change for the background color then, I'm going to say assign the background color based on the output of is set. What I'm checking to see if it's set in this case is a value for BG background. If we do have a background color, then from the post array, take that background color. Otherwise, let's give it a default value of white. Then in my CSS, instead of using the post array directly, we will use the resulting value that we have in the BG variable. If I now go back and refresh the page from scratch, you can see there are no errors, no warnings, no notices of any sort hidden in the code. I'm getting my default values of black and white. But if I choose something different, uh, let's say a yellow foreground with an orange background, there we go. The colors change. Everything looks good in the actual output code from the script. And I think we've got it. So a single page in this case that has the ability to submit to itself, in order for that to be able to work, remember the page has to be able to play two roles. Just supply the form with default values if nothing has been submitted. If something has been submitted, use those submitted values to customize the page, but still give the user the basic form. With this little bit of extra code we've done up here using the comparison operator, the question mark colon, we've been able to accomplish that. It's maybe not necessarily the most readable way to accomplish something like this. I usually like to only use the comparison operator in situations where it's very clear, very plain, very straightforward. Something like this, I would probably actually prefer an if statement. And that's something we will talk about before too much longer. But for the moment, you can see that we can accomplish our goal using something as simple as just those uh, two characters, that simple comparison operator.